Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Bianca Pillar, and it is my absolute pleasure to be participating in the second Ibero-Americano panel hosted by UNIMED in honour of World Evidence-Based Healthcare Day. I would like to begin my presentation by acknowledging that I am delivering this presentation from the lands of the Ghana people. I also acknowledge the traditional custodians and people of the various lands on which you all work today and any Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people participating in this event. As we share knowledge for World EBHC Day, may we also pay our respects to elders, both past and present, and their knowledge and experiences. I would like to disclose my affiliations, noting that I'm delivering this presentation in my capacity as Chair of the World Evidence-Based Healthcare Day Steering Committee, and that I have no direct financial conflicts of interest. For those of you who would like to engage across social media, you can use the hashtag World EBHC Day. Over the next 30 minutes, I will be speaking to you about how and why World Evidence-Based Healthcare Day was established, providing an overview of each of the campaigns from the last four years, including some high-level lessons learned. So as we all know, COVID-19 marked a turning point for evidence-based healthcare and decision-making. Policymakers, healthcare providers and researchers face major challenges in translating a rapidly evolving body of new evidence into tangible response efforts, with health policy decisions receiving unprecedented public attention. However, in 2020, organisations and networks within the global evidence community were also grappling with new ways of working, communicating and organising, not only within their own organisations and networks, but also with new and existing partners across disciplines and sectors. The Global Fora, where communities would ordinarily meet to network and discuss ways to move the EBHC agenda forward, largely in-person conferences, symposia, workshops, meetings, etc., were greatly compromised and at a time when collective action was needed most. But physical distancing did not mean collective disengagement. In the words of Antonio Guterres, ninth Secretary General of the United Nations, this is, above all, a human crisis that calls for solidarity. So it was through this lens that World Evidence-Based Healthcare Day was established in 2020, at a time when evidence-informed decision-making was pulled into the spotlight, there was a need to create space for a global community to come together and discuss, debate and share when the usual mechanisms for achieving this had all but disappeared. So in mid-2020, seven global organisations in evidence-based healthcare with networks that span all regions of the globe were convened by JBI to establish World Evidence-Based Healthcare Day. The aim was to launch an initiative that would draw multidisciplinary actors from the global evidence community around a common agenda, that is using evidence to improve lives. Despite the chaos of COVID-19, we posed the question in this inaugural year, if not now, then when? So World Evidence-Based Healthcare Day was launched in October 2020 with a view to raising awareness of the need for better evidence to inform healthcare policy, practice and decision-making to improve health outcomes globally. One of the most powerful tools to address ongoing, ongoing health um, challenges globally is that of human connection. And that is why national and international awareness days, weeks and months are so important. They rally us together around a common cause to spread awareness, invite debate, discussion and innovation, share experiences and show support. So in 2020, the inaugural World EBHC Day campaign, From Evidence to Impact, asked the global evidence community to reflect and share their experiences of how their work had contributed to impact in health research, policy, practice, guidelines, or patient outcomes. Impact stories submitted and published for the World EBHC Day 2020 campaign came from diverse settings, but they had one thing in common. In plain language, they outlined how their work in evidence-based healthcare contributed to making an impact and they were a powerful reminder of our varying roles in ensuring trustworthy evidence is used to inform decision-making. The impact story pictured here from Cameroon 
for example, highlight, highlighted how eBase Africa works with the District Health Service of Bali to reduce the number of complicated malaria cases by 78% over four years, using research evidence in clinical practice to correctly manage unco uncomplicated malaria before complications set in using JBI's evidence-based order and feedback approach. From Cochrane First Aid in Belgium, we learned how the conduct of 10 systematic reviews informed and contributed to an amendment to the blood donor eligibility criteria being approved by the Belgian Senate and Parliament. An impact story from China demonstrated how a six-month rapid EBP project for normalising the pre-treatment assessment for patients with breast cancer undergoing chemotherapy to improve the standard of care was sustained and scaled up over a two-year period. This resulted in province-wide implementation to more than 20 hospitals and included training more than 1,000 nurses in evidence-based practice. From Brazil came an impact story about how the results of a mixed method systematic review contributed to updated World Health Organization guidelines for the diagnosis, treatment and prevention of leprosy. A story from the UK shared how the implementation of evidence-based guidelines reduced the prescribing costs and improved the quality and consistency of prescribing for type 2 diabetes across general practices ultimately improving the quality of care for patients and augmenting the local health economy. Finally, from Iran, we learned how evidence-based guidelines on the prevention and treatment of COVID-19 were developed to inform the Ministry of Health guidelines and to aid decision makers in implementing practice at the community level. The guidelines were made readily accessible to healthcare providers, decision makers and the general public by a 24-7 call centre with on-call librarians. When viewed together, these impact stories provided a rich insight in, into how different individuals and organisations were working within and across different evidence ecosystems, what changed and how, their positive, contextual and challenging experiences and outcomes, and lessons learned from their work in evidence-based healthcare. Most importantly, however, they captured and amplified the voices of those individuals working to improve health outcomes worldwide through evidence-based healthcare. When we surveyed authors about their experience of developing these impact stories and the value of these stories as a mechanism to disseminate and communicate the impact of their work, responses from authors highlighted how the process of personal reflection, interviewing colleagues, patients, stakeholders, was valuable in and of itself to deepen their understanding of why they did their project or program, how they tackled it, what they learned, what others learned, and the extent to which their work had contributed to change. Other responses related to opportunities that the publication dissemination of these stories led to. One author noted that their impact story had been downloaded tens, tens of thousands of times via WeChat and that in her opinion, this dissemination had been a great mechanism to raise awareness about the value of evidence-based practice amongst nurses in China, particularly those without a research background. So with 35 impact stories published and more than 25 events held across the globe in 2020, it was clear that there was an appetite to connect and learn. Building on this collective wisdom of using evidence to generate impact in 2020, the 2021 World EBHC Day campaign supported the infodemic management efforts of the World Health Organization by exploring the role of evidence in an infodemic, in particular promoting access to trustworthy evidence-informed health information. From many of the impact stories and events held in 2020, we learned how the COVID-19 pandemic highlighted the importance of developing rapid evidence-informed responses and ensuring the best available evidence was accessible, transparent and understood. The rapid response of the global evidence community was important and necessary. However, it was also accompanied by the exponential production of misinformation. The sheer volume of information, some accurate and some not, and the number of ways to access it created what we call an infodemic. So an infodemic is too much information, including false or misleading information in digital and physical environments during a disease outbreak. 
It causes confusion and risk-taking behaviours that can harm health. It also leads to mistrust in health authorities and undermines the public health response. Infodemic management um, was and is an evolving area of research and practice, and documenting our experiences helps future guidance in managing infodemics, including the role of evidence and the lessons for the evidence-based healthcare community. Guided by infodemiologist Gunther Eisenbach's work and the WHO's infodemic management framework, we called on the global evidence community to share their experiences, expertise and stories on infodemic management, including facilitating accurate knowledge translation, knowledge refinement, filtering and fact checking, building e-health and science literacy and monitoring infovalence and social listening. The global evidence community responded in far greater numbers in 2021 with 37 blogs and more than 30 events held across 25 countries. This included Twitter chats, webinars, crowdsourcing, online conferences, journal clubs, citizen science fora, science communication courses, and journalists and media workshops, and more. For the official World EBHC Day webinar, international experts in evidence-based healthcare, science communication, and consumer representatives discuss the critical issues associated with communicating science in a pandemic, including access, availability, dissemination and interpretation of research evidence and combating misinformation. So what did we learn from this official webinar, the other events and blogs as a part of the 2021 campaign? Well, we learned how several organisations developed tools that enabled public health practitioners to identify what information about a particular topic existed, what was being shared, how that information was being discussed, and any information gaps that existed in the community. Understanding the information environment within a community can help public health communica um, communications tailor messages to a particular audience and their information needs. Summaries and reports on emerging scientific information from peer-reviewed publications and preprints including those that were retracted, can help inform medical and public, uh, public health decision-making and risk communication. Many organisations, including academic institutions, research centres, NGOs and local health departments, also develop programs or resources to enhance individuals' digital media and health literacy, including science literacy. These resources were generally designed to help individuals become more conscientious consumers of health um, and online information, thereby improving their ability to navigate the information environment during an epidemic. Examples included health departments creating web pages with information about how to find, evaluate and understand credible information about COVID-19 including explanations of the peer review and print preprint processes, as well as a discussion of sample size considerations for epidemiological studies, providing um, you know, public users with the tools necessary to critically evaluate and better understand scientific information about COVID-19. We also learned how organisations tried to enhance epidemic management through improved communication and community engagement approaches. Many of these approaches and resources were aimed to improve public health communication by either producing or providing guidance on how to produce effective and trustworthy messages that could cut through the noise of the epidemic, resonate with target audiences and promote protective health behaviour particularly for marginalised and vulnerable communities. We also learned the importance of striving to develop high quality, accessible health information in different digital formats to make health content easier to find with search engines and other internet technologies that could be referenced by fact-checking organisations, social media platforms and media. Um, accessibility issues were also highlighted this includes people with low bandwidth connections and people with disabilities and adapting websites for local cultures, including translation to reach multilingual audiences. Finally, we learned that partnerships are key. Overall, combating the misinformation of the COVID-19 pandemic and any future infectious disease 
um, pandemics must be a collaborative effort that involves all stakeholders at different decision-making levels. The overarching emergent theme from authors, the blog authors' experiences with infodemic management during the 2021 campaign was the importance of establishing partnerships. This included scientific, academic education, government policy, patient, consumer and clinical sectors between those who generate reliable, trustworthy evidence and those who have the power and influence to effectively disseminate it, implement it, use it and educate others on how to access, appraise and apply it in their own unique context. So it was this final lesson that provided the impetus for the 2022 campaign, Partnerships for Purpose. The global evidence community has long recognised that collaboration is key to producing trustworthy, pragmatic evidence. And the COVID-19 pandemic highlighted the importance of evidence-based healthcare and the need for partnerships in developing rapid informed responses, streamlining global evidence and reducing research waste. The scale of national and international collaboration triggered, triggered by COVID-19 surpassed all historical precedents. While many partnerships pre-existed the pandemic, there was an extraordinary increase in the new and innovative partnerships and collaboration between regulators, governments, scientists, researchers, health care providers, tech giants, consumer groups and many more. So World EBHC Day in 2022 drew attention to these innovative and collaborative partnership initiatives within and across the global evidence ecosystem. And it sought to shine a light on the challenges, facilitators, experiences and best practices in the science and art of working in partnership to bridge the research, policy and practice um, divides and realise the potential of evidence-based healthcare. In 2022, the global evidence community responded through the publication of 41 blogs and over 30 video logs addressing this theme of partnerships for purpose. To better understand and learn from these experiences, members of the World EBHC Day Steering Committee developed a research project to examine the challenges, facilitators and outcomes of different global partnerships promoting and supporting evidence-based healthcare. Following the reflexive thematic analysis methodology of Brown and Clark, we reviewed the 41 blogs published for the 2022 campaign. Partnerships that were reviewed spanned all regions of the the world and consisted of more than 20 different partnership typologies, including those listed here. The reflexive thematic analysis of blog authors' experiences generated five key themes relating to commitment, conditions, culture, communication, and capacity and impact. This thematic map illustrates the range of challenges, facilitators, and outcomes that were identified from the personal experiences of blog authors in these various partnership typologies. As you can see here, the themes are interdependent, so with 14 out of 48 codes being mapped to more than one of the five themes. The nature of collaboration is highly relational, so it was not surprising to us that commitment was a strong theme across the blogs. The ideas or codes clustered around this theme related to sharing power, commitment to embedding equity, diversity and inclusion, and dedicating time and resources to the partnership. Now, some partnerships are strategic and others form organically, But either way, it was identified that creating the right conditions for a successful partnership is critical. This theme was concerned with issues related to uh, policy, process and procedures, and it highlighted the need for strong leadership and setting clear and coherent goals and expectations. Resourcing and funding for partnerships were also emphasised within this theme. The third theme identified focused on culture, and was concerned with politics, power and people. We learned that investing in and paying attention to culture was deemed critical for the goal and strategy formulation of of partnerships and establishing a foundation of positive behaviour, understanding, empathy and social capital for collaborating organisations. Communication plays a vital role in almost every aspect of partnership and collaboration regardless of the nature or focus of relationship. 
So perhaps not surprisingly, the fourth theme was related to communication. This theme included statements that advocated for open and transparent communication, information sharing, regular meetings, embedding systems and mechanisms for communication and feedback. The fifth and final theme, theme related to capacity and impact. And it was deemed essential that partners had access to resources, funding and expertise. And shared learning was identified as critical along with the importance of mutual benefit. So what did we learn, not only from this research project, but from the campaign as a whole? We learned that the need for commitment, the right conditions, culture, communication and capacity form a dynamic web of interactions that shape the trajectory of partnerships. Recognising their interconnected nature and nurturing each element with care creates a foundation for enduring successful partnerships in evidence-based healthcare. We also learned that while the structural dimensions of partnerships are often easier to identify, establish and measure, it is actually the relational constructs such as understanding and valuing partners' strengths and perspectives and the importance of building trust, respect and social capital that were seen as instrumental. And finally, that partnership as a process is valuable. The synergy that a partnership can achieve is more than simply an exchange of resources amongst partners or a vehicle by which different organisations working together to achieve agreed upon targets. Despite the many different types of partnerships highlighted throughout this campaign, what these diverse partnerships had in common is the value that they placed on the process of partnering, not just the outcomes. So in terms of key takeaways, an important reminder from this campaign was the need to remember that fundamentally what is at the heart and success of partnerships is relationships between people. It's the relational human aspects of partnerships such as empathy, communication, trust and social capital that need to be fostered and intentionally invested in. Blog authors were also resolute we must address the ongoing concern about making partnerships equitable for and beneficial to all partners. Integrating equity-centred approach to building, evolving, maintaining and managing partnerships places equity-focused practices, that is the regular routine things that partners involved in partnering do intentionally to make partnerships work well at the centre of what we do. The clear focus on equity, diversity and inclusion, experienced both as a challenge and as a facilitator by authors, was in fact the impetus for this year's 2023 World EBHC Day campaign. So now for our fourth and final campaign. The campaign for World Evidence-Based Healthcare Day in 2023 is centred on evidence and global health equity. Evidence is seen as a prerequisite for achieving global health equity and equitable health policies, systems and services are all dependent on functioning evidence ecosystems. That is the local, national or global communities of actors who commission, fund, produce, synthesise, disseminate, translate and use research evidence, the formal and informal relationships between them and the policies, practices and structures which facilitate, facilitate and underpin their interactions. Health inequities are the unfair, unjust and avoidable differences in health caused by how power, resources and money are distributed in society. In 2023, we reached the midway point for the 2030 United Nations Sustainable Development Goals and a global commitment to leave no one behind. However, the global crises of humanitarian disasters, climate change and health pandemics are all impeding progress and exacerbating global health inequities, highlighting the urgency to strengthen local and global evidence ecosystems to address these societal challenges. According to the WHO, achieving an impact on global health inequity is the ultimate aim of better use of research evidence in health decision making. However, the ways in which we commission, fund, produce, synthesise, disseminate, translate and use evidence to inform health policy and practice can both worsen existing, existing health inequities or help to address and overcome health equity challenges. 
Over the past 18 months, key, key global evidence summits and commissions have urged the global evidence community to take concrete steps towards equity-centred evidence-informed decision-making. Prioritising equity within and across evidence ecosystems to win back progress towards the Sustainable Development Goals requires a collective drive to challenge the status quo and establish systems, policies and practice that help to advance global health equity. To this end, the 2023 World EBHC Day campaign calls on the global evidence community to share experiences on how to strengthen evidence ecosystems to advance global health equity. So far, the global evidence community has responded by submitting more than 50 blogs and 20 video logs telling their stories about addressing and overcoming health inequities and embedding health equity within and across evidence ecosystems. Examples include centering racial health equity and systematic reviews, strategies for overcoming funding uncertainty for evidence-based rehabilitation in Africa, building global capacity for inclusivity in academic publishing, advanced digital health enhancing equity in Thailand, and the co-production of knowledge in the context of cognitive development. These global insights, lessons learned and experiences shared so far are multidisciplinary, multi-sectoral and have broad applicability. As a steering committee, we look forward to undertaking a formal evaluation towards the end of the year to distill and synthesise lessons learned that we hope to share via the website, social media and publications in 2024. So as you can see from this presentation, as a global initiative, World Evidence-Based Healthcare Day has grown exponentially in engagement and reach over the past three years. In 2022 alone, 919 organisations and more than 5,000 individuals from 123 countries recognised and engaged with World EBHC Day, reaching more than 43 million people across social and digital media. Events like the symposium that we congregate for today have been instrumental in bringing people together to open discussions and raise awareness about evidence-based healthcare. World EBHC Day is an opportunity to keep evidence and the role it plays in fr front of mind as we move forward in navigating new ways of solving old problems. World EBHC Day is also, however, a celebration of the tens of thousands of individuals working in evidence-based healthcare worldwide to improve health outcomes. So in this spirit of recognition, it's important to note that the conceptualisation, implementation and success of World Evidence-Based Healthcare Day is very much thanks to a global coalition of the willing. And it would be remiss of me if I didn't acknowledge my colleagues pictured here in the steering committee, whose time, dedication and effort over the past four years have been instrumental. To finish up, I strongly encourage everyone to get involved, not only over the coming week, but of course, in the coming years. You can take some time to read the 50 plus engaging and informative blogs from more than 20 countries published for this year's campaign. If you're interested in understanding more about evidence and global health equity, including your role in centering equity in your work, then I encourage you to register for the World EBHC Day webinar that's taking place next week on the 19th of October. Or you can join the global conversation on October 20 via all the social media platforms using the campaign hashtag World EBHC Day. There are social media resources like the graphic that's pictured here available to download in more than 10 languages on the World EBHC Day website. So in conclusion, thank you again to the organisers, to Unimed and for everybody listening and participating today. It's really unfortunate that I couldn't participate live to take your questions. However, please feel free to connect via email or LinkedIn. And of course, happy World Evidence-Based Healthcare Day.